Let's do a quick drive-by debunk where we talk about the Doppler effect and Flat Earth. Of course, this isn't exactly a new concept, but Flat Earthers sometimes would like to use the Doppler effect in different ways in an attempt to prove the Flat Earth. We made a video about this before, but I got something new to bring to the table this time. In the middle part of the 19th century, a man named Christian Doppler noticed that objects that emitted sound would produce either a rising or falling pitch to an observer, depending on the movement of the object relative to the observer. We know this today as the Doppler effect. Late in the 20th century, we merged radar technology with the Doppler effect, and we came up with Doppler radar, which is currently on your screen. Moisture shows up on Doppler radar much like it does on traditional radar with one large exception, which makes Doppler radar superior. The Doppler radar unit detects the direction in which the moisture is moving relative to the Doppler unit itself. Sorry, I've been cutting out some things here and there because I'm sure you all know how the Doppler effect works by now. If not, then basically it's an object moving towards or away from you that will cause a compression or expansion of waves, which can either be light sound or anything else. In the case of Doppler radars, they work by sending out a low frequency electromagnetic wave such as microwaves, which bounce off a target and returns with a different frequency. And using that difference, we can tell the speed of the object. In the specific case of weather radars, they use radio waves, which can tell us the velocity and direction of precipitation, which we can then use in our forecasts. It's pretty neat. So the question is, why does this prove the Flat Earth? It is important to note that Doppler radar has no computation or compensation built in for the direction in which the signal is returned. In other words, an object moving toward the radar unit will shift the image towards green if the precipitation is moving toward the unit itself. It doesn't matter if the returned image is to the north or to the south or to the east or west. The Doppler radar unit is stationary and treats all returning signals alike, regardless of the directional source of the return signal. That was worded very weirdly. For anyone confused, he's saying that the returning signal could come from any direction, and if the precipitation, for example, is moving towards the Doppler radar, it will detect it as blue shifting. And thus, with the spinning ball Earth that we are told exists, we've got a big problem. You see, if the Earth is rotating at somewhere between 750 to 1,000 miles per hour to the east, depending on the latitude of the radar unit, the Doppler effect would be totally negated by the Earth's rotation. Any echoes from the west would necessarily be moving away from the Doppler unit at 750 to 1,000 miles per hour, plus or minus the actual speed of the moisture that's moving itself while echoes to the east would be rushing toward the radar unit at the same speed. All the other angles in between would create an almost infinite and nightmarish computation for the radar unit to sift through in order to make sense of the echoes received. Flat Earthers love to use the rotation of the Earth as a sort of gotcha, or as I like to call it, the we don't feel the spin of the Earth, therefore it doesn't exist argument. And every time I have to point out the same thing, the one thing that just destroys any argument related to the Earth's rotation. We live in the Earth and within its atmosphere, so when the Earth spins, everything is spinning with it, so we don't perceive the actual motion of the Earth. The only thing that we'd be able to feel is if the Earth accelerated or decelerated quickly, such as if the Earth suddenly stopped spinning, for example. Everything in the Earth and within Earth's atmosphere spins along with the Earth, and therefore the Earth appears stationary. That applies to not only our senses, but also the way that waves travel through our atmosphere. So while you're saying that signals traveling west would have to fight the 1,000 miles per hour rotation of the Earth, it's not actually doing that in our perspective of the Earth. I don't know how else to word this to make it clearer. It's a basic concept that you just have to swallow already. The bottom line is, there is no computation or correction for any Earth movement whatsoever. The radar unit interprets all echoes the same, regardless of the compass direction. Doppler radar would be a total impossibility on a moving Earth. It simply would not exist. It would not and could not work if the Earth is a spinning ball. I mean, you literally just said it yourself, that the moisture has to move relative to the radar. The Doppler radar unit detects the direction in which the moisture is moving relative to the Doppler unit itself. 
All right, let's say hypothetically that for some weird reason, the signals do have to fight with or against the rotation of the Earth. In that case, it is very possible to tune the Doppler radar so that it takes that into consideration. It can put the rotation of the Earth within its system to adjust depending on the location of the radar and the direction of the returning signal. I don't see why that would be impossible. You lack imagination. Anyway, while the Doppler effect is being used by flat earthers to disprove the round Earth, it's actually the other way around. Since flat earthers love the Doppler effect so much, I'd love to hear a response to this argument. One of the reasons we know the universe is expanding is the general redshift of stars and galaxies. We can look at the stars and see the distortion of electromagnetic waves being either blue shifted or red shifted and that tells us if the star is moving further away or closer to us. What we see in general is that stars and galaxies are red shifting, indicating they are moving further and further away from Earth. From a flat Earth perspective, they probably think this doesn't really say much in the perspective of their flat Earth model. I don't know, maybe stars are just moving higher and higher in the sky? Until you realize that compressing light is incredibly incredibly difficult. Compressing sound is obviously easier, but for light, which is what we use to determine the red and blue shift of stars, just to change the frequency of light by 1%, the object has to be moving 3,000 kilometers per second relative to us, or about 1,850 miles per second. But I'm just putting that into perspective. 1% isn't enough to explain how we see all the redshifting of stars. What we see in the sky is that closer stars redshift less, but the further away a star is, it is redshifting more. So much so that some of the furthest stars we can see right now with how much it is redshifted, it is moving away from us at the speed of light. And the furthest galaxies we have observed is moving away from us at more than double the speed of light. So please, tell me how that is possible on a flat earth where the stars are just hanging around in the local sky. How is a star moving away from us at double the speed of light on a flat earth? And how is it getting past that stupid dome that apparently covers the earth? I'd love to know the answer. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. Next time you argue with a flat earther, feel free to use the Doppler effect as ammo. It's super effective. Thank you to Fireshard, Alan Morton, Miss Fixit, Rick Klen, and Bomanium, and I'll see you all later.